is Dr. K.C. Vora, uh, Senior Deputy Director at ARI. I head ARI Academy and also teach students automotive engineering. So I have we have been supporting Skill India initiative of the government. Also, we have been supporting e-mobility initiative. Making a four-wheel drive vehicle is not an innovation. Using some gimmicks related to electronics, which is of no use to the vehicle, is not an innovation. Innovation is something which has upgraded the performance of the vehicle or which has given some benefits to the vehicle in terms of materials, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of cost, in, ter in terms of durability, comfort, safety, or anything which makes the vehicle smart, safe, and sustainable. Good morning. Uh, hello students. You know that you have to write project report uh, whenever you do any project, whether it is a mini project or a main project, whether it's a B-Tech project, whether it's an M-Tech project, you have to make a project report. So whenever you make a project report and give it to your guide, your guide makes a lot of corrections and give it back to you. Yes, there must be some corrections left for the guide so that he feels very happy, yes, I have done the correction. So that is a trick I used to do when I was a student. But don't make so many uh, so many mistakes that your guide gets fed up in giving the corrections. So how do you write a project report is what I'm going to explain you today. So whenever you write a project report, the project report has to be in an A4 size and there has to be a particular font. The font and the font size are decided by the respective college or universities. Based on this, you can. Some of the university and colleges gives a template which you can use. Otherwise, you can just use an A4 size and use the Microsoft Word. Now, what would be the index or what would be the pages in the report? So you would see that first must be a certificate, which has to be signed by your guide, by the internal examiner, by your external examiner. And then there will be a declaration in which you have to declare that whatever work you have reported in this report is all done by you. It is not taken from somewhere else except the literature review. Then in case you want to acknowledge uh, your faculty, your guide, your friends, your family, you can do that. In case you have taken some references, you can acknowledge those authors also. Then you have to write an abstract. The abstract must not be more than one page. It can be half a page, three fourth page or one page. It must give a summary of what you have done in the project. And in the last line, you must write the results. The results may be quantifiable and it must not be very vague. Then comes the project executive summary. So project executive summary is bigger than abstract, probably of two page, such that if any senior executive wants to go through your project report and he does not have time, if he reads those two page of project executive summary, that's more than enough for him to understand what is in this project booklet, right? So that is a project executive summary. Ensure that in the abstract there are no figures and no table, but in the executive summary there is at least one figure and one table, a concluding table at the end and then what have you achieved what was your target and what have you achieved quantitatively and qualitatively then comes the index the table of context followed by list of figures and list of tables so when you write a chapter say chapter number one then all the figures in that chapter will be 1.1 1.2 1.3 when you write put the figures in chapter number two it will be 2.1 2.2 2.3 so that whenever you change the numbers or whenever you put figures you don't have to change everything after the figures will become the list of table, whenever you write, draw a figure, the, the title of the figure will be at the bottom of the figure and whenever you make a table, the title of the table will be on the top of the table. Then you write abbreviations, so in case you are used abbreviation, you can put them in the alphabetical order and various nomenclatures you have used them, preferably in the alphabetical order. So these are the first few pages. I would suggest you have a separate word file for this and the separate word file for the main project report. So here it can be in italics 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, and here it can be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and have two separate files together because the actual number, page number 1 starts from here. Obviously the first chapter must be introduction which will include all these things, what is the need and uh, introduction of the system, what are the objectives of this project when you started the project, what are the methodology you have followed in this project, uh, what were your targets. And I always believe that target has to be quantifiable and measurable. So if you say that my noise will reduce by 2 dB, then you must be able to measure it at the end of the project. You can't say I don't have that equipment to measure. 
So it has to be quantifiable and measurable. Sometimes even quality is fine. Then the project proposal sheet. Project proposal sheet is of three pages and where you write down what is your project, who is your guide, whether you get any stipend or not, and then everyone signs. The student signs, the guide signs, and the HOD signs. Uh, the last page is basically the target and how are you going to do the project. You can also put the timeline in the project proposal sheet. That these are the various steps and these are the time. And the final is project plan. So you can make a project plan in MS project or there are many companies who use different methods of project plan. It can be just a simple Excel sheet also. Then you start with chapter 2. Chapter 2 is generally literature and patent review. So whatever literature you have studied, various essay papers, technical papers, books, periodicals, uh, everything you can put in literature review. And also you must do a patent search. Since you are doing an engineering project, you must do a patent search. Uh, for example, if you want to go and see US patent, then www.uspto.com. You can check the Indian patents and all those things. Whatever is related to the title of your project or the, the main uh, program of your project, everything would come in this. So once your literature, you have collected a lot of literature, collected a lot of patents which are related to your projects, Put them together, say what X is doing, say what Y is doing. You don't have to say what you are doing, you have to say what others have done up to now. It's a prior art. And in that, you can make a comparison table. For example, X, y, X have been able to reduce the noise by so 2 dB by doing so and so. Y has been able to do this by doing so and so. And Z has been able to do it by. And then compare them all the three methods. So that at the end, you can conclude what is. You can, what is the takeaway of this literature? Review? I will use this data in my project. I will use this method in my project, or I'll do something better than that. Then comes the design of system. The project can be on two sides. It can be a process or it can be a design. Suppose you want to design uh, something which will improve the efficiency of your engine or you want to improve the process in production. So when you improve process, then it is design of the process. When you use a product or when you design a product or a component, then it is design of a system, sub-assembly or a component. So how do you design? You need to do a CA analysis. You need to do some design calculations. You need to decide the dimensions. You need to give tolerances. All those things will come under the design of system. Then comes modeling, modeling and analysis. So whatever you design, you need to validate that by some model. So you can do a C analysis. You can do a CFD analysis. You can do Pareto analysis. And there are so many methods by which you can analyze and find out how your system is. In case you want to do modeling, you need to make a model. You need to do an analysis. All those will come in this. Next comes design FMA DVP. So whatever you design, you have to consider its failure mode and find out what could be the possible failure and how can you may have the best design to look into it. Then also you, the output of the design FMA will become the input of DVP, design validation plan. What tests you will do at the end of the project to find out whether you have met all those targets or not. So once this is done, you can do further optimization. You can do design of experiments, you can do optimization of systems, you can do some experiments and find out that some more modification is required. So that is chapter 6. Chapter 7 is the actual experimentation done. So you have tested something in an engine lab or a noise and vibration lab or you have tested on the road. All those experiments should come here, which is basically the part of the design validation plan. At the end, you have to produce DVP and R, that is design validation plan and report. Finally, you need to put all the results. So you need to discuss, analyze that I did this method of testing and these are the results. I did that method of testing and these are the results. And finally, make a table saying that these were my targets and this is what I have met. So that is results and discussion. At the end, you can conclude your project and in case you feel that something more is required to be done, then you can put that in the future plan. Maybe somebody reads your project report and takes it forward from there. Or maybe if you have done VTEC in future, you can do MTEC on future course. Or if you have done MTEC, you can do PhD on the future course. Finally, you have to put all the references and the appendix. Appendix is something which is, which you suppose you made a software, then you can put that in the appendix. Suppose there is a standard, you can put this in the appendix for reference. In the references, whatever you refer, you have to write the reference. The references at the end of the project report should be cross-referenced across the uh, table, across this report, serially. So if in literature review I have reference number one, then that will become reference number one in the reference, and so on. So that's all, how to write a project. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much.